G'day there. You're watching the Aussie Bim Guru, and today we're running through a quick tutorial in Grasshopper for Rhino. Um, you're gonna have to forgive me if you know computation pretty well, because this is a very, very cliche tutorial, but a really great one um, for learning some fundamentals in Grasshopper and computation. So from time to time on the channel, I've decided to start sharing some basic algorithms that focus around geometry and Grasshopper um, to try and bring everyone up to a, a higher level of basic understanding of the platform because I will be doing more complicated tutorials in Grasshopper eventually. So today we'll be looking at a, a classic which is the Twisted Tower. Um, I've decided to make my own tutorial for it because I find other ones don't really go as far in depth as I'd like them to. Well, they don't focus as much on how data is being managed uh, to create the base form and work with it. Um, so we'll be, we'll be looking at creating a workflow that has downstream control uh, where you can modify inputs at the start to influence things uh, deeper in the script um, and taking a measurement from that output, but also using basic geometry transformations and some uh, very basic arithmetic sliders and ranges and then some basic intersections in Grasshopper. Um, so again, sorry if you know computation really well, this probably isn't a video for you. Um, it's almost a running joke in computation that Twisted Towers are a bit of a sin, um, but they are a really good place to start if you don't really know a lot about uh, computation. So today I'll be using uh, Rhino 7 and Grasshopper for Rhino um, as, as expected. Um, so let's jump straight in. If you find I talk a little bit too fast, feel free to slow down the video uh, using the playback settings on YouTube. Um, but without further ado, um, I'm just going to go straight into Rhino and I've just booted up Grasshopper from the ribbon and we're going to begin um, just by creating the base form for a tower, which in this case will be a box. Now you could take a form from your Rhino document, it's up to you, but in this case I'm going to, I'm going to create everything from inside the script itself. So we're going to be looking for a 2D rectangle to begin with, and the rectangle has a base plane, which is effectively a point it's placed at, which also contains a rotation factor. Um, it won't always be oriented up the coordinate system, um, depending on how you orient that plane. We're then going to set an X and a Y size, and you'll note that in this case, these sizes aren't a number. They're actually what's called a domain, and these are really commonly used in Grasshopper and other computational tools. So I'm going to take a little bit of a shortcut here and show you some tricks in the meantime. I'm going to begin by creating a number slider. Now you can just look for number slider, but a shortcut for a number slider you can type in, which I nearly always use, is the lower number of your slider, this, uh, this arrow, the less than symbol, um, and then the, the value that you want your slider to be at. So I'll say 15, and then the upper value, and that will create a slider with that domain, um, which is really handy and a great little shortcut. So we need to create a domain now. So I'm gonna construct, in this case, a domain. So a domain is comprised of two values, a bottom and a top, which implies the size of the domain. In this case, I actually want this to be half of this width in both directions. So I'm gonna right click on these and you'll notice one of the options you have here is called expression. So one of these I'm gonna say is negative 0.5 times X. So this is gonna be half of the value um, in the negative direction. And then likewise, I'm gonna set this in the positive direction by half. So now our number slider effectively is going to be half of the overall size in either direction. I'm now gonna plug this into the X and the Y, and now we can see I have a parametric, uh, in this case, a base for my tower. Now with this, we need to now actually move this up to both the center point and the top point of our tower form so that we can create the twisted geometry overall. Um, so again, I'm going to need another slider. So I'm going to go maybe 10, 30, 50, and this will be the height. And we can also right click our sliders and change the names of these inputs so the user has a better understanding of what they are. And with this, in this case, I'm actually going to build a little cluster, which we're going to use a couple of times in the script. And a cluster is a set of nodes that you can put inside uh, an overall node that holds them together to keep your script a lot cleaner and to reduce the amount of repetitive code that you have to use. So in this case, um, I'm just going to begin building the cluster. So for this, I'm going to need to divide this value in half and then add half of that value onto itself. Now there's a few options of how we could do this. Um, one option is that we can divide the value by two, and then we can merge it onto itself. And that's one option. Um, another option we could use is we could multiply this by a list of values instead. So I could say multiply by 
And in this case, I'm going to make a panel. I'm going to right click it and I'm going to make it multi line. And I'm going to say 0 0.5 and 1. And now we have, in that case, this value as half of itself and a complete value of itself instead. Um, if we really want to, we can go one step further and actually just multiply itself by zero as well so that we have all three of the possible heights this object is going to be placed at, which we can then keep in a list structure to carry forward and not have to merge the original object onto the transformed objects afterwards. So I probably actually don't really need a cluster here. What I could do is just right click this input and I can go internalize data. And what that does in Grasshopper is it stores those values inside that input, even if they're a list or something more complicated. And then I don't need this to hang around anymore. So I don't actually need a cluster here. I can just use this uh, little block here. Now, sometimes internalizing is not, not the best idea because unless you hover over the input, you won't actually know uh, that this is an internalized value. But typically it can be quite obvious depending on how the script is functioning that something has been internalized. So what I'm gonna do in this case is I'm gonna move, uh, in this case, the rectangle. And notice that I'm moving it in this case by zero, 15 and 30. And I'm gonna move it in the Z direction using that as a factor. So what I'm doing here is actually moving this rectangle three times. So in Grasshopper and most other programs like it, um, you, when you transform an object, this object still exists back here as a defined object in this node. When I carry this forward, I now have three objects, but this also includes uh, a version of this object that hasn't been moved. It's just stayed at the same position. It's usually better to work this way if you can, rather than trying to merge old objects on the new list. So in this case, what I can do is just turn off my preview um, on my downstream. And now I want to also rotate, in this case, those objects as well. So to do this, I can use the rotate objects node. Um, and now I'm gonna be taking these and I need to rotate them by a list of angles. So again, I'm just gonna create um, a angle slider. So I'm gonna go zero, 45, 90. And I'm gonna make sure my angle is set to degrees, not radians. And from here, I'm just gonna create another list and we'll say by default 0, 0 0.5 and 1 again and multiply that angle by these numbers. And now I'll have three rotations in this case. Um, so what I can do is now just plug this in and if I want I can then internalize this again. And I can say in this case angle. And we can see now we still have the original unrotated objects, but we now have also the transformed representation of them downstream. So I can turn off this preview. And now we can see that we're able to rotate these objects. But we can also go further back downstream and still change the height, the width. So all these inputs are still dynamically able to feed down the script. With this set, now what we can do is loft these objects together using the loft node, because these are all closed curves or rectangles. And currently this object will be open, so we can also cap the holes to make sure it's solid, so that now we can intersect this with objects. So there's a few ways that we can intersect this, and why are we intersecting it? Well, of course, we want to create floors for this object. It's a tower, it has levels. Um, there's a very, very simple way to do this, which works very well if all your floors are the same level, and that is using a node called Contour. So we can take this object and it has a base plane of by default 0, 0, 0, uh, a normal direction. So which way the contours move is straight up and what distance apart will our contours be? Well, in this case, I can just create a slider. Let's say that our lowest floor to floor is 3.0, uh, median is 3.5 and our upper is 4. And as soon as we do this, we now have a set of curves that we can use to contour this object. And that's a very straightforward way to do it. Um, now, a really cool thing in Grasshopper, which a lot of other programs don't have, one, one, the first thing I'll show you is you can, you can flatten list structures whenever you want just by right-clicking the node and flattening. Now we have a flat list of curves. But I can also transform objects very directly. So if I want to take these closed curves and turn them into a surface, rather than using a very complicated node to do this, I can actually just feed them into a base surface node. And I now have surfaces available. So often you can go very directly between certain types of objects. 
uh, in, in Grasshopper, which can save a lot of time and a lot of space on the canvas. But we can see now we have the floors. And what we can do with this is measure their area. And the area node by default will also take the centroid or the, the, the middle of that object. Um, so we usually want to turn off the preview for that. And we can run this into what's called a mass addition for the areas. And now we'll have a tracker of the area that we're targeting. So if we know what area we want our tower to be, um, we can obviously keep an eye on this input as we change the rest of the sliders in our particular project. So we can see that obviously if we have a lower floor, we'd expect to have more area because we have more floors. And as we increase that, we'll have a lower area of course as well. Now obviously this isn't really uh, what a true tower design typically looks like. It's a very simple form, um, but you can take this approach and apply it to pretty much any solid shape. So if you have a tower mass and you wanna divide this into floors, this is one way you can do it. Now a more long-winded way to do this, um, and this is more of an approach you would use if you had multiple floor to floors you want to use, is instead you would actually take your original height and you might want to end up subtracting a value from it in order to create a, a podium level, for example. But um, for now, let's just work with even floor to floors. So I'm gonna divide in this case, my height by my desired floor to floor. So I'm gonna take this back. And now I should have typically probably a non-whole number, so 8.333. So I can only actually feasibly get eight floors into this mass. So what I'm gonna do with this is round it. And the round node in Grasshopper has both a rounded up or down, a floor which is rounded down, and a ceiling which is rounded up. And from this I can multiply my floor to floor by my rounded down value to get the, the highest floor that is able to be fit, able to fit within the mass. And from here I now have a 28.8, which is that height. From this I can now build a domain from zero to that height. So by default, A is zero and B is one. So now we have zero to 28.8. And I can now construct a range of values. And from that, I'm gonna take my domain and then the number of values, which is my floor. And I'll now have a list of heights that I can work with um, all the way up to this point. So rather than using just a single number into the contour node, I can now work this way. And I believe that the contour node can work in this case, um, create a set. I forget if this actually works. No, so in this case, I might actually just do a B rep intersection. What I'll do in this case is a B rep and plane. So I might go over to the intersection tab. Um, in this case, we have a whole bunch of ways to intersect objects. Um, so I think in this case, uh, we want B rep plane, which should be around here somewhere. There it is. And this is a little bit slower than contouring I typically find, um, but sometimes is necessary when you're dealing with different uh, floor to floors. So in this case, I'm gonna construct a plane. And in this case, I need to create a point for the origin of that plane. So I'm gonna create an X, Y, Z or construct point. Oops. Uh, construct point. And I'm just gonna set X and Y to zero and Z in this case to those heights. From here I can create a plane at each of those points. I can now use these planes to take my capped form and instead I can then intersect that with these planes as an alternative. So you still get effectively uh, the same outcome but this can sometimes be a more handy workflow when you might have different heights you want to situate those intersections at. Um, so that was pretty much it. Just really running through a whole bunch of basic transformations uh, using sliders and basic arithmetic, using rounding domains and ranges, uh, planes and basic intersections to create a, a basic study of a form. Again, it's a very cliche tutorial, but I find it does cover a lot of basics and fundamentals of geometry. Um, and I will be doing some other tutorials a little bit like this one uh, on the channel with some other fairly cliche examples, but we'll put them together to learn a little bit more about geometry and computation before we head into some more advanced tutorials where these fundamentals will still be quite useful. So I hope you found that a, a useful uh, basic tutorial about Grasshopper, especially if you're new to Grasshopper and computation. Um, you can find this script and other ones over on my GitHub, which you can find at that link. Um, if you do have any questions or topic requests, feel free to either email me 
or drop me a comment and I'll do my best to get back to you in a quick amount of time. Um, again, I hope you found this useful and interesting and if you are uh, a computationally experienced person and found this really boring, I apologize. Uh, but from time to time, I will dip back down to some fundamentals in this field because I know a lot of people are really only just getting their feet wet in computation at the moment. Um, so uh, I look forward to seeing you in future similar videos, some more advanced, some about the same level. Um, and hope you have a good day. Thanks. Take care. Bye.